This unit is going to be about objects. Like we talked about in unit one, JavaScript is an object-oriented programming language. You can write code and model your programming structure using objects. So we'll look at how objects work in JavaScript, and we'll also compare and contrast it with the way objects work in some of the other classical languages. Well, we covered this. JavaScript is an object-oriented programming language. However, it is not a class-based programming language. Contrast this with a language like Java, where you have classes which define objects. In order to create an object, what you would need to do is create a class first, right? Create a class, add member variables, add methods to it. And then when you create an object, you create objects of a particular class, right? You say, I want this object to be of a class. So the class forms the template, and then all these different objects are basically copies of that template. This works in a lot of class-based, object-oriented programming languages. However, in the case of JavaScript, there are no classes. It is not a class-based, object-oriented programming language. So you can create objects without having classes. In fact, it's necessary because it's not. there are no classes in JavaScript. So JavaScript objects are essentially freeform. They're not bound to a particular class. Let me demonstrate this and I'll talk about some of the features of the JavaScript objects. So I'm going to go back to my Firefox window here. And uh, let's say I want to create a new object, right? I can create objects in multiple different ways. The easiest way to do it is by creating an object in line. Think of how you would create a string in line. So I can say a var my string equals hello. This is an inline string. So I created a string variable by providing the value inline. I can do something similar for an object. So I can say var my object equals, and I can give the object value inline. The simplest object value that I can give is an empty object, and I can do that by using open curly brace, close curly brace, right? So what you're seeing here is an empty object. It's start object, which is the open curly brace, end object, which is the close curly brace. There's nothing in the object, right? And with this, I have to find a variable, which is an object. My obj is a variable which contains a value, which is an empty object. And uh, I can print this. So let's say I do a console.log of my obj. I should get the object, right? So I see an object, which is an empty object. You see this open, close, curly braces. So we have successfully created an object out of thin air. We didn't have to create a class for it. Okay. Since it's not class based, there are no rules about what goes into an object and what shouldn't, right? So you can add anything to an object at any point of time. That's what I meant when I said JavaScript is freeform when it comes to objects. There is no predefined structure. You can add new stuff or remove stuff from an object whenever you want during runtime. Um, I can actually do that by adding a property. You know, objects typically consist of properties and methods. You must be familiar with this from some of the other uh, programming languages which involve objects. An object is essentially a collection of data and functionality. The data is referred to as properties, and the functionality usually is, you know, consists of uh, methods of the object. So let me add a simple property to this my object object. Right now it's empty, right? We can create a new fun new property. So I can say my obj dot uh, prop equals hello. So take a look at this line. What I'm doing with this line is I'm creating a new property called prop on the object my obj, and I'm setting a value to it, which is a string called hello. Okay, so I'm adding a property on the fly. I'm adding a property dynamically at runtime. And now what's going to happen is if I do a console.log of my object, I'm going to get the object with the property that has a value, which is a string hello. Let's uh, reload and run. Now there you see, this is an empty object 
which was what the object started out as. It was an open closed curly braces, which was an empty object. But then I added a property on the object called prop and the value was hello. So if I print the object again, you see this is an object with a property called prop and a value is hello. Okay, this is how you can essentially add properties to objects dynamically. You don't think of objects in JavaScript as belonging to a template. Objects in JavaScript behave more like a map. It is a property and a value. So you can add keys to a map, right? So you, whenever you add something to a map, you add a key and I associate a value to it. This is more kind of like that, right? So I was able to create a key called property and then have a value called hello, which was assigned to it. Uh, let me add another property here. So I can say my obj dot prop two equals uh, a number. So in this case, it's one, two, three. And now I print this after both these properties. Preload and run. There you see the newly populated object has two properties now. One is prop, which is a string. And then one is prop two, which is a number. So I'm adding properties on the fly. Now not only can I add properties, I can also read from an object. So I can access a property value. I can do that by using the same convention, object.property. So I can do a console.log, let's say uh, the number property is, and then I can access the property by using this convention, my obj dot prop two. Gonna reload and run again. There you see the number property is one, two, three. Okay, it was able to pull up a specific property from the object by using the object name dot property name uh, convention. So this is a brief introduction to objects in JavaScript. They're essentially freeform, like I told you. You can think of it more like a map than the traditional class-based objects that you're familiar with with some of the other languages.